What's up everybody, this is Carl from Techful Goodies and today we are looking at the AK-1 Plus Mini PC. Now I have a bit of a soft spot in my heart for mini PCs. I just think they're so cool. The issue is that there's so many out there on the market, it's really difficult to know what you need to get in order to fulfill whatever requirements or needs that you want and to make sure it's gonna work for a long time and work well. So that's why we're taking a look at this one here because it's not a super high-end mini PC, but it's also not one of the super low-end mini PCs. You can get mini PCs that are so low-end that honestly, they're almost unusable, but not this one here. So here is the mini PC itself, okay? So this is the A1 Plus. And if you look on the back here, you have a couple of different options. You have a USB-A port, this is a 2.0. You have two HDMIs. They support up to 4K resolution, a hardwired ethernet port, and the power port here. And if you look on the side here, you have two USB-A 3.0 ports and one USB-A 2.0 port, okay? So some of the higher, higher end mini PCs nowadays will be very USB-C focused, which I think is fine, but it really drives the price up. This is a very affordable, mini PC that you can use for your business or office needs, emulation, home server, or even a media server. You can hook this up to your TV and then you have yourself a full media center where you can use the computer and watch videos. And I also thought it looked pretty nice because it has this little bit of RGB glow around the outside here that actually shows some of the activity that's going on right now. I don't have it turned on or hooked up, but you'll see that in a minute. And the other thing I think is very important to know about this is the expandability. But when you're taking a look at this, um, you have an eight gigabyte memory and a 16 gigabyte memory version. I have the 16 gigabyte memory version, but the eight gigabyte also will work quite fine, especially if you're using it just for your daily activities, web browsing, spreadsheets, even for a media server, that's gonna work just fine. The other interesting thing about this mini PC is the fact that it has this bottom part here. So this bottom part has two switches, and then the bottom pops off. So as you can see on the bottom here, there is a USB-C port that actually plugs in to the bottom of the machine. What that allows you to do is take the bottom portion of this mini PC, take out the two small screws that are located on the bottom. And inside here, you have the ability to put in an SSD drive. So if you wanna increase the storage on your PC, this particular one comes with 256 gigabytes of storage if the eight gigabyte memory version and 512 gigabytes of storage for the 16 gigabyte version. So if you want to add a terabyte, two terabyte SSD drive to this, you can do so. All you would have to do is take a SSD drive like this and simply slide it in, make sure it plugs into the port over here, shut it back up, put it on the bottom of the machine, and then you have that extra storage that you need, especially if you're using it as something like a media storage or a network connected home server, you can add that extra storage and it is upgradable. So in order to power it, you basically have a standard power brick here with a normal barrel plug on the end here. So I'm gonna plug it in here and get it working so we can check out some of the specs and some of the benchmarks. And when you're hooking up to an external monitor, the cool thing about this is that you don't need any sort of proprietary cables. You just need a standard HDMI to HDMI cable. If you are using it for a home media server, you will want to make sure that your HDMI cable supports 4K if that's what you want to do. Some of the HDMI cables out there don't support 4K. So you want to make sure that you have a 4K UHD supporting cable. All right, I'm going to use my ProtoArc portable keyboard and mouse for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up OBS Studio. That's something that allows me to sort of capture the screen and show you some of the things in a little bit of closer detail rather than from the overhead camera. And one of the things I do like about OBS is if you look in the bottom right corner here, it kind of shows you the CPU usage. I've had some older computers in the past that I've used for OBS and it's really telling whether or not you're able to have a PC that can kind of keep up with what you're doing. Now, this is not a gaming PC. This does not have like an NVIDIA card in it. It does have an iGPU, so it's basically a chip that's on the motherboard that allows for the pass through of the video signal. This particular one has Intel UHD graphics. Now that's gonna give you the ability to play your videos, do YouTube videos, run everything just fine, but you're not really gonna get a lot of gaming support out of this. 
But when I start recording, if you look at the CPU usage down here while I'm recording, it is only using about 4.2, maybe 5% of your CPU. Now, if you go into Task Manager, you can take a look at the performance side of this. The CPU does have standard usage. Like right now, it's using about 38%, but that's just the system plus OBS running at the same time, plus everything else that's going on. So speaking of the CPU, this has an Intel 12th generation Alder Lake N95 GPU, which goes up to 3.4 gigahertz. I have a couple benchmarks that I've run here that I'll show you real quickly. Uh, when it comes to Geekbench, Geekbench score, single core score is 1207 and multi-core score is 2402. If you take a look at the Geekbench site, you can use those numbers to compare to other machines that you might be familiar with to know whether or not this is gonna work for you. And I also did run the 3D Mark score, and this is obviously going to be pretty low because it's not a 3D game heavy system, but it did get a 353 score. Uh, the graphic score you can see here is 308, but the CPU score is 2286. Now, when it ran, it was extremely choppy because this is a really graphics intensive test, but it was able to continually run it, which tells you that the graphics card and the CPU in here allows it to actually do all the commands and all the high-end graphics processing that it needs to without crashing, but it doesn't run it quickly. So that's just, again, something to keep in mind. Like I said, I have the 16 gig version of this machine. It's currently using 4.2 of that, and the memory speed is 2667 megahertz. It does support Bluetooth 4.2, as well as 2.4 and 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi, and the ethernet port on the back is a gigabit ethernet port, so a thousand megabits per second. So I'm just gonna do a couple things here on the screen so you can see exactly how uh, fast the machine is. Right now I'm loading up Chrome and I'm gonna go ahead and go to YouTube. So you can see kind of scrolling through the site, uh, there are a couple of small, tiny delays, but I mean, that sort of happens on every computer that I've used. Let's go ahead and, and pick a 4K video off here, even though this particular monitor that I'm using right now is not 4K. I do have the ability to pop up the quality here and change that to a 4K stream so that you can see exactly how fast and how capable of this is of running 4K video. So I'm gonna go ahead and full screen this and you can see that even though this, like I said, this screen is only a 1080p screen, it's still having to download and process that 4K signal. And it handles it like a champ. So again, if you're gonna use this for like a home media server to watch videos on your television or on a portable monitor or something like that, this will work just great. I'm actually gonna go ahead and hook this up to my 4K TV downstairs. I'll overlay a little bit of B-roll here so you can see how well it runs. And I also downloaded a 4K video here. I'm gonna use just the standard built-in Windows Media Player. So this is actually a 4K video file that I downloaded that's running directly off the machine. So you're not pulling this down off the network, it's actually having to process it through the CPU and GPU in order to play it in real time. I think that's really telling because a lot of machines you may use when opening like a 4K full-size video will start to chug and you'll definitely notice the difference, but this is handling it like a champ. And so again, just to run over a couple of these specs so that you have an idea of what is available in this box, it does have the Intel Alder Lake N95 processor, like I mentioned, Intel UHD graphics, it does come in eight gigabytes or a 16 gigabytes. Those are both DDR4 memory specs. It is capable of doing 4K 60 Hertz, Wi-Fi 5, Bluetooth 4.2, and dual HDMI 2.0 4K 60 Hertz ports in the back. I think that's important to know as, as I showed you earlier. It does have two of the HDMI ports in the back that allow you to run dual monitors at 4K if you want to. So in general, would I recommend this mini PC? I would say absolutely. I've used more expensive mini PCs and I've used cheaper mini PCs. And what I've found is that this one in particular hits kind of that sweet spot between price and performance at about 150 for the 8 gigabyte memory version and around 200 bucks for the 16 gigabyte version I don't think you can go wrong if you're looking for something that you can move around for a media server for a home server for office business computing all sorts of stuff so hopefully this helped you out in making some sort of decision if it did give me a like give me a subscribe I'd love to see you back but until next time this is Carl from Techful Goodies and I'm out